Well, this video might be a bit weird, wacky and left field, nevertheless, it's still valid. If you've got a road bike like one of mine here, it's got standard gearing and you're riding along up a hill and a steep part of the hill comes, so you're off your saddle in first gear and you're grinding away up the hill and the guy next to you is sitting on his saddle and he's spinning faster than you are grinding away. Why? Because he's got compact gearing and you ain't. <laughs> different cadence as you can see uh, they bridge over by by Nieve and Froome's gone he's gone oh this is glorious kicks away and said this mountain is mine this jersey is mine this tour I, I'll be bound he's going to well here's Chris Froome multi tour de France winner showing how high cadence dominates in the climbs Chris's high cadence is obtained by using lower gearing so what does lower gearing actually mean for you and can you alter your bike's gearing to have a higher cadence to help you climb faster? So here's Chris and he's decided to help us with the demo. With every pedal revolution the bicycle will move a certain distance forward and this distance when measured is called the rollout. Thanks for that Chris. Now let's take a look at your bicycle. It has a cassette cog set on the rear. A common size is 1128. And you have a front crank set with two chain rings, either a standard size, 53 tooth and a 39 tooth, or you may have a compact size, 50 tooth and a 34 tooth. Different combinations of your front chain rings with your rear cogs gives you your different rollout distances. For instance, combining your largest 53 tooth chainring at the front with your smallest 11 tooth cog at the back means you'll have a rollout distance of 10.2 meters, which is great for going fast. But now combine your small 39 tooth chainring with the large 28 tooth cog on the rear cassette and you'll only move 2.9 meters for every complete pedal revolution that you make. Now looking at the compact crank set. Its smaller 50 tooth front chainring combined with the same 11 tooth cog at the back will only give you 9.6 meters of rollout, while its smaller 34 tooth chainring at the front combined with the same 28 at the back will give you 2.6 meters of rollout. So this means the standard crank set at the high end with its larger rollout of 10.2 meters will help you go faster, while the compact crank set has a low end rollout of only 2.6 meters. So that'll enable you to climb easier. Calculating the rollout of your bicycle is easy. It's the number of teeth on your front chain ring divided by the number of teeth on your rear sprocket multiplied by the circumference of your wheel. For example, first gear on your standard crank set is 39 tooth divided by 28 tooth multiplied by 2098 millimeters of circumference on your wheel. That's 2,922 millimetres that you'll roll every time you do a complete pedal revolution. Or you can round out the figure, it's 2.9 metres. The size of tyre you're using also affects the circumference of your wheel. So for a 23C tyre, you'll multiply those numbers by 2,098. And for a 25C tyre, it's 2,111. Calculating all the combinations of your front chain rings with your rear sprockets and you come up with a table of measurements and this table because it's in metric is called meters of progression. So here's the complete table for compact, standard and semi-compact crank sets with all the most common sizes of rear cogs. Well if you'd like to try out compact gearing before you go and lash out on a new crank set or a completely new bike you can. You just need two things, one of them a mountain bike and the second thing you'll need is one of these a rear derailleur hanger extension this will enable you to use your short cage rear derailleur on an extra large cog set and they're really cheap they're only about three dollars fifty so all we have to do is take off the rear cassette and chain off your mountain bike and put them on your road bike sounds crazy let's go to the workshop and we'll do it right so we're in the workshop Here's the bike, here's the piece we're going to put on and we're going to go one step further with the ratio 
I'm going to put on an 1134 just to show you that it really works. So first, take the chain apart. This is using a Connex removable link. So take the chain off. Wheel off. Undo the cassette and take that off. New cassette on. I've taken this one from my mountain bike. Measure your new chain. It needs to be two links longer than your previous road chain. Here I'm using my mountain bike chain, which is two links longer than my road chain. While your back wheel is off, remove your rear derailleur from its hanger. Like that. Now with this special little piece, just remove the threaded bolt and put a bit of grease on there. A bit of grease on your threaded bolt there. Alright, put that back in and then you can screw it directly onto the hanger. And it's a six millimeter. So we find the six. There. Then get your rear derailleur. Make sure you've still got grease on there and screw that into the bottom of that hanger. So basically it's a hanger extension. Done. Put your rear wheel back in and the chain on. And done. And that's it. Now just check your gears, make sure they're in line. Beautiful. Now you see on the bottom cob, the smallest cob there, which is an 11, we've got a fair bit of chain slack. So, what you do, if you go to the back here and there's a screw called the B screw, get familiar with your B screw. If you screw that in, that'll take up the slack. So you go to where the slack's gone and then a little bit more. There you go. And that's fine. So now you go through your gears again. That's all right, that's fine. So that's first gear. Now, go back to your small cog and put on the front chain in. Then you go up. Probably wouldn't want to go any further. Probably wouldn't want to go any further than this, otherwise your derailleur stretches too much. Now this is a 34, mind you, remember. So you're three cogs off, one, two, you're on the third cog, so that's pretty good, third cog from the top, and then you're on your big chain ring here. Now, if you want to go further up, that's fine. You'll get away with it with a 32, you'll be able to go on your second largest. Anyhow, it's no good going on your largest cog in the big at the front anyway, it's not recommended. Anyone will tell you that. So there you go, you get away with the 32, with the 34, you just go down to your third cog at the maximum. So there you go, it works. I'm right along, I'm in third gear. Pretty easy, feels like my first gear of my previous bike. Yep, I'm going up a hill now, I'll try second gear. Yep. Feels a bit easier than yeah, a bit easier than my other bike and first gear. I'll try first gear now. Ah, 
it's amazing, it's so easy. I'm like, I'm probably doing a little bit faster than walking pace. I'm pedaling fast, I feel like I can go up any hill. <laughs> Can't wait to try it with the bunch on the weekend. I can go up some steep hills to try it out. This is cool. Just a bit slow. <laughs> Get there eventually, but easily. Right, all done. All ready with big pancake on the back. We'll try it out with the guys tomorrow in the bunch. I think we're doing about 86 k's or something and quite a bit of climbing, so we'll give it a good run tomorrow. We'll see how we go. Anyhow, so uh, with these guys, Unless you're trying, trying out the gears. Gear already. Okay. Well, it's nice to spin up the hill. Quite nice. I missed getting off the saddle though. <laughs> nice to have a break. Well, here we are back again from this morning's ride, fed, shaved, and showered. And we did about 86 k's with 900 meters of climbing. Um, it was a good ride as most of the rides are. So how did the gears go? Well, sum it all up, compact gears shine in the hills. That's about it. So one thing I noticed was with such a large range of gears on the back, and this is only 10 speed, was missing the intermediate gears. So you're in one gear and if you want to go a bit lower to go up a slightly steeper hill, oops, that's a bit too low, oops, go down, oh, that's too hard, there's nothing in between. A true compact with the smaller chain rings at the front would give you a much larger range of gears. You wouldn't need such a huge range difference in your cogs. That'd be a little bit more like, say, an 1128 or even 1125, and you'll still be able to go up the hills. So that's the one thing with that is you miss the intermediates, whereas a true compact will give you those intermediates. The second thing you'll notice with lower gears is you sit on the saddle a lot more, and I did that today sitting on the saddle getting into a nice rhythm which is good because you get into a rhythm and you can keep that constant power going up the hill but I missed I missed getting off the saddle when the other guys were getting off the saddle then I'm thinking oh I sort of put it down a couple of gears and got off the saddle myself because it gives your back a little bit of a break and your legs a little bit different position in riding in the muscle usage there so getting off the saddle a bit it's nice to have a bit of a break um, whereas you can sit on the saddle with the compact gears a lot more so much and a muchness there but I can see how the pros would use it with their power meters sitting on that nice constant rhythm and they'll get up the hills quicker in a lower gear well that's enough rabbiting on from me with this video it was good fun experimenting and if your road bike hasn't got compact yet and you'd like to try it I thoroughly recommend go for that little hanger there it costs virtually nothing to do and grab your chain and cassette off your mountain bike if you haven't got a mountain bike or access to a second-hand chain of cassette, you can always buy a new one, Tiagra. Tiagra make a cheap cassette chain, or you can use any chain really. So you can go for that and give it a go. Um, as for me, I've got to take that chain of cassette off now and put it back on my mountain bike, because I wonder why that hasn't got one. Mm. <laughs> I've got to ride in two days with the guys, so better put that back on. And I'll put my standard one back on. All right, thanks for watching. It's good fun. Leave your comments below or whatever you want to talk about and um, I better finish my drink, my recovery drink. Mm, this has got uh, carrot, apple, some silver beet leaves in or spinach, uh, parsley, ginger, have I left anything? Oh, and beetroot. Mmm, <laughs> tastes good. Just sip it slowly. See you soon. Is your, is your volunteer rider for today? Volunteer rider? Yeah, see the email he's having? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no I don't know. Yeah, yeah, sometimes our group, sometimes we get faster ones, they go off and leave the slower ones, so we sort of, sort of split up in two groups. already